First, thank you very much to the Chile Green Building Council for inviting me to speak at your international summit. This is indeed a great event and I have enjoyed listening to the previous speakers and watching the videos, very inspirational. What I would like to do today is talk about buildings, of course, but talk how they relate to the broader urban um, strategies around sustainability and resilience. Just some data many of you are probably aware of. Buildings represent about 39% of global carbon emissions. We expect to double the global building stock by 2060, and by some estimates, as early as 2050. Two thirds of current buildings, such as those we see here in New York City, will still be here in 2050. So it's not just new buildings we need to worry about, it is all buildings. And unfortunately, the renovation rate of, of buildings on a global basis is a bit less than 1%. Here's some data from the World Resources Institute um, which looks at the mitigation potential for different sectors in cities. Buildings is by far the largest um, sector. And this is the gigatons per year of carbon reduction potential in different sectors using available technology, which is cost effective. What we found in the research is that um, while buildings, both residential and commercial, represent the largest single opportunities, we can double the mitigation potential if we combine that with rapid decarbonization of the electric grid. We need to decarbonize buildings and we need to decarbonize the grid. Doing so together has doubled the benefit. Um, the first D in DEEDS, which is an acronym, is decarbonization. We need to decarbonize buildings. We need to decarbonize energy. And we need to decarbonize transportation. And we need to decarbonize industry. And we need to decarbonize agriculture. Now in buildings, we need to give particular urgency to the electrification of heating, space heating, water heating, as well as uh, cooking. So once we have electrification in place, we absolutely need efficiency. There's no scenario in which we don't have to continue to increase the efficiency of buildings and the equipment within the buildings. If we're going to double the amount of electricity, we need to have the amount of electricity use in the built environment. But we need more than just efficiency, like insulation and more efficient windows and things like that. We also need to take advantage of digitalization or smart technologies. We need to be able to shift and reduce the demand of our appliances and our EV charging in our buildings over time so we can accommodate intermittent renewables and so that, that we can further reduce the demands on the grid and increase reliability. The focus was always on how do we improve energy efficiency of buildings with the big goal being to um, um, have zero carbon buildings, all new buildings by 2030 and all buildings need to be retrofit to zero carbon status by 2050. We had magical three steps. One is cities that participated, implemented a policy which would drive building efficiency. They implemented a pilot project which demonstrated the value and impact of that policy. And they set goals, tracked and reported progress on an annual basis and shared their results with other uh, governments. Today, 60 cities in 26 countries, including Santiago, Chile, thank you very much, um, participate in the Building Efficiency Accelerator Network. And we think that we've shown that 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 has been a replicable global model to um, uh, expand the impact of, of, of building efficiency and decarbonization. The purple dots you see are our deep engagement cities where we've actually engaged with both national governments and city governments together to align policies around national climate goals. 
There are a number of pathways to zero carbon buildings, work we did a number of years ago, but beginning with energy efficiency before adding renewables. Renewables should be on site before we add off site renewables. And renewable energy um, would give preference over carbon offsets. Now, we hope someday we will have carbon removal offsets where we are developing national roadmaps in two countries, Colombia and Turkey, as well as working with two cities each within those countries to develop climate action plans that are aligned and linked to the national roadmaps. Those roadmaps are informed by NDCs and other national climate commitments. First, we should probably take a step back and just talk about definitions. One of the things that's 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 kind of confusing is there, at, at one point, there seemed to be more definitions for zero carbon buildings, carbon neutral buildings, carbon positive buildings, near zero carbon. You get what I'm saying. Um, without consistent definitions, um, it's sometimes hard to discuss these things and understand that we're talking about basically the same thing. 80% of all of these definitions have common elements that we can build on. The one advantage we have is almost all the technology we need is available and becoming more cost-effective every day. We need to apply it in smart ways and make sure that we don't lock in inefficiency into the buildings that we build today. Let's just talk a little bit about how do we go from zero carbon buildings to zero carbon cities. Um, countries won't meet their Paris agreements if cities don't. Cities can't meet their commitments if buildings don't. And buildings can't unless they consider the entire system impacts of everything within the built environment. Here you see going from a building scale with some on-site renewables, electric storage and building efficiency to a district scale where we're taking advantage of district heating and locational efficiency so people don't have to drive cars, they can bike or scooter to work, and the ability for microgrids to provide greater resiliency as well as greater sustainability at that scale. And finally, at a city scale, now we start to integrate into urban planning. We start integrating into the urban energy systems. We integrate with other infrastructure systems. So two definitions, one would be zero carbon districts, where essentially, um, because taller buildings are gonna be disadvantaged to use on building renewable energy, even if we put PV on the facade of a building, um, you know, a building greater than seven or eight stories generally um, is not gonna be able to generate all the power that it needs regardless of how efficient it is. So we're gonna to need to source that renewable energy, hopefully locally within a neighborhood or a district level. And then there's another idea around a portfolio. A bank that owns a number of buildings in a given city could basically um, draw little circles around those buildings and create a portfolio, which they could in turn create um, uh, a zero carbon portfolio. Enough of those um, could in the end uh, have a very, very significant impact. This is sort of how we're seeing urban, um, uh, urban systems evolve over the future. So as we look across all the domains and areas of expertise, we see a lot of integration potential and are developing some methodologies by which we could look at major initiatives within a city, whether that be integrated urban planning or green infrastructure to the built environment, obviously, distributed renewables, decarbonization of heavy industry, transportation and things like that. And coming up with ways of being able to identify opportunities where by working together with Synergy, we can reduce the cost of solutions, we can increase the impact of solutions, and to the extent we can do that within departments or agencies that are either overlapping or related, we can also address some of the political um, challenges of, of getting initiatives done. Buildings will always be central, but they don't have to be the only thing, and we can have a bigger impact if we can integrate 
Urban Solutions. Thank you very much for uh, letting me speak today.